is out with engine problems. Tom Bagley is out with turbo problems. Mike Mosley has retired from the race. And as you saw right there, that was Poncho Carter. Carter fans, it's not a good day. Car number eight out of competition. In the back straightaway, Rick Mears, number seven, making his move as they go into turn number three. Rutherford has dropped back. John Rutherford falling away a position here as they come up into turn four. And they come around to complete the 62nd lap. As they do, A.J. Foyt is in front, but he can't close in the sixth place car just in front of him, Unser. Second is Mears. Running right behind Mears is Tom Sneva's car. That second of the Penske PC Automobiles is actually four laps down, but they've made the repairs and it's running well, and he's trying to gain back some time and stay up in the point standings in the national fracas. There goes Tom right back by Rick. Tom Sneva just passing Rick Mears, who was the second place driver, but Sneva, who just passed him, is running four laps down. A.J. Foyt coming in of turn number four. McElreath comes by running very slowly, about 70 miles an hour, across the start finish line as we complete the 63rd lap. And cannot close to the leader. Tom Sneva is about to take a lap back. Going into turn number one, Sneva with a Penske car closing on the Foyt Coyote. He is four laps down at turn two. He is now three laps down. Sneva really turns it up, cranks it in. Here's A.J. Foyt running side by side with him. Super Tech struts his stuff into turn three. <laughs> A.J. cranked up some also. Side by side once again. And we have a car running slowly on the back straightaway. It could be Mears. Side by side. Still coming down into the straightaway. That's amazing running on this very bumpy track. AJ leading by four laps. It looks like a battle for the lead. They just won't give up out there. Mears has has come to a halt down in turn number three. Rick Mears has come to a halt. His teammate Sneva running side by side for the last two laps with A.J. Foyt. Rick Mears, who was out for his third win of the season, having trouble and has dropped down to the inside. He won't, I don't think he's gonna make it back to the pits, which would bring out perhaps the third caution of the day. Coming around, Bobby Unser going beneath him into turn number one is Sneva who is now running three laps down from the leader, A.J. Foyt. And there is Rick Mears trying I think you're right about to gallop yellow. this car back. That should bring out another yellow. That would be the third caution of the day. Uh, a real rash of yellow fever out here in this Texas 200-mile USAC championship car race today. This would enable Tom and Bobby to regain that lap. If they can stay ahead of A.J. Yellow is out. Caution is on the track. They race to the line. And this will give Bobby Unser a chance to circulate all the way around the track and rejoin the leaders. Foyt could not, could not contain him. We're just getting a report on Talladega. Remember, that's coming up. You're going to see highlights of the Talladega 500 two weeks from this past Saturday. It's the 19th of August. Along with the Travers, there's Rick Mears car coming to a halt. So we hope you be with us a great race weekend. Let's go to Paul Page down in the pits. He has a report on the problems of the Penske cars. Well, Jim McGee, the crew chief on the Penske machine, is talking with Rick Mears on the two-way radio. Rick Mears reported that something is wrong in the gearbox. They don't know what it is. They don't know if it will keep him out of the race. But at the moment, it doesn't look good. Thank you, Paul. Here is a bulletin from Talladega, Alabama. Lenny Pond in the Rainier Oldsmobile has just won his first Grand National race. Lenny Pond of Ettrick, Virginia has scored his first victory and you'll see that upcoming on CBS two weeks this past Saturday along with the Travers. Here are the standings here in the Texas 200. A.J. Foyt is in front. John Cock now shot. 67 laps completed here in this 100 lap event at College Station, Texas. With Dan Gurney and Paul Page, I'm Ken Squire. There are eight cars remaining on the track, nine cars at the present time with one on pit road. A.J. Foyt is commanding, and there is the Rick Mears car back into the garage area, and Rick climbing out of the machine. Rick Mears getting out in car number seven. Boy, he's given it a good shot this year two wins and he's only driven a limited schedule this year his contract was to drive the races in which mario andretti would not appear mario of course moving toward that austrian and then the dutch grand prix and the 
and the Italian Grand Prix could wrap it all up. He could pull it all together here and give the United States his first World Formula One championship since Phil Hill did it back in your day, kid. <laughs> Cut it out. <laughs> How are you going to feel if Mario Andretti pulls it off, Daniel? Well, I feel he certainly deserves it. He's a great champion. And I'm all for him. Great racer. Looks like we're going to green. Getting set for resumption of this event with A.J. Foyt out in front. Boy, it'd be something if he can win here in Texas. They love him down here. I think everybody in the motorsports world likes this guy. You can't beat him for determination. And you talk about true grit. You could give John Wayne lessons. <laughs> Don't ever count him out. Coming down the line. He's dropping out of the pit road. There's going to be another lap. And A.J. is going to give up that first place. Paul Page standing by down there. We'll try to get a report from him as A.J. is back in another time. Dick Simon is also pitting car number 17. Field is completing the 69th lap. That's something over at uh, Talladega with Lenny Pond winning the first race of his career on a track where dark horses win. That's the 10th different winner. And again, David Hobbs and Brock Gates and truly will bring you the action from there in highlight form. Two weeks this past Saturday, along with the Traverse. What a, what a day that's going to be. If Aladar meets a firm to the following day, we'll be in Milwaukee for live coverage of the United States Auto Club Championship car race there. Great weekend for racing enthusiasts, whether it's four-footed or four-wheeled. Back straight away. John Cock again has the lead. Cannon is out. Gilhausen is out. Bagley is away. Mike Mosley is out. Carter, Mears, George Snyder, Saldana running very slowly. McElreath in the back of the field has had to slow down and just barely creep around out here condition he doesn't like to be in field back up in turn number three pace car is pulling away and we should have a start this time when they come down by to complete the 70th lap they should be under green aj is back on the course and with the field in the tail end and number 20 gordon johncock will have first place with johnny rutherford in second Rutherford in the second position. I believe Steve Krisloff would be third. A.J. Foyt will be in fourth as they go to turn one. That bump is down on the inside of number one, and though you can't see it on the screen, it will wrench the steering wheel. Unser, Bobby Unser pitting. Car number 48, the Gurney car is in. Your stomach just drop out there, fella? <laughs> <laughs> That's got to hurt, Dan. Engine has died on the machine. John Cock is in the lead. Here's Gordon John Cock in front. 71st lap, about to be committed to the record book by this sensational driver out of the Hastings, Michigan area. Drove those modifieds up at Oswego, New York. Now out of Arizona. Tough, gritty little driver who has been the spokesman in this four-cylinder versus V8 battle for the four-cylinder people. John Cock in the back straight away. Gordy has already run won two races so far this year. There's Unser taking off the helmet. And for this day, it will not be a victory. It's been some time since Bobby Unser has tasted victory. And of course, many of us hoping it will come to him very, very soon. The eagle not flying today for Bobby Unser. A.J. Foyt screaming around Wally Dullenbach as he drops to the bottom of the track, and Dullenbach wants to run with him into turn number one. A.J. wants another shot at those leaders. Eight o'clock Eastern time tonight, CBS News will have a special report on the death of Pope Paul. That's eight o'clock tonight on CBS. Leadership coming up for perhaps a change. Car number 20, John Cock is in front. The change will not be a major one. It will be Steva trying to get a lap back and move up to be only two laps down from the leader. And it looks like he may be able to pull it off. Rutherford is second, Bristoloff is third, AJ is running fourth, Wally Dollin back is in fifth. We'll return with more live action from the Texas 200 right after. Gordon Johncock with two victories this season will not win number three. He's in the pits, walking away from the race car. Gordon Johncock retiring late in the race. 75 laps completed, just 25 laps to go, and A.J. Foyt has retaken the lead. A.J. has retaken the lead. Rutherford is in second, and Tom Steva is again pitting car number one. They were making up time, making up laps, then it's all gone away. Paul Page has a report on what happened to Bobby Gunser. Dan, or, or Bobby Unser, I think Dan Gurney is upstairs, would like to know what happened. Well, something broke inside the transmission, and uh, it just 
got stuck in second gear and wouldn't come out, but uh, that's what caused us to drop out. But USAC just came up with a new rule that uh, you, you've got to have a board out there that says, Peter, you can't come in under the yellow. And it's the most stupid and ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. I run out of fuel, make my own penalty from that, and then they sent me down another lap because I ran out of fuel. And I think it's so ridiculous. I think we're sitting here running, you know, $150,000 cars and acting like a bunch of babies. I'm just thoroughly disgusted with it. Is there anything that you as a driver think you can do about it? No, there's nothing I can do as a driver. It's just, it makes some of these rules haphazard. Their intentions are good. They just don't give any thought to it. Bobby Unzer not very happy with his finish today. His finish is with a broken car. The happiest he's been all weekend was about his nephew's victory in a sprint car. He was more excited than Al Unser about Al Unser Jr. winning the other night. He was just exuberant about it. But he's not happy as you can see right there. He's pretty unhappy, Daniel. Ken, I'm sure that a, a new rule is, is even difficult to keep it in mind, much less uh, agree with it. Here's A.J. Foyt running in first place. Johnny Rutherford is in second. Steve Krisiloff is in third position with 21 laps remaining in the event. Those are the front three. Back the field comes into turn number four and down to the line. A.J. Foyt has the advantage. Putting a watch on to see what the variance is. It's about three. They're, they're putting a time on the leader now. It's about three and a half seconds between first and second place as A.J. Foyt tries to pull away from the field here and score a victory in this United States Auto Club champ car race. And I guess it about three seconds. This hasn't been one of A.J.'s all-time best seasons, but he's still well up in the hunt in the national standings. Remember, this is a two-mile track as you watch the seconds tick away. The man who has just won race after race, no one can come close to his mark. 36 and 4 tenths seconds, 197.802 mile an hour average for Foyt for one lap late in the going. That's very fast at this point in the race. Ken. Seven cars left on the track at the present time. Seven machines left, and the heat and this track has really taken its toll, Dan. It looks at the moment like Super Tex is pulling away from Lone Star JR, the two Texans leading the Texas World Speedway. The uh, sweep for the Texans, the way it's going right now, and the interval continues to build up. You can see between the red car and the white car, the lap car in between. That's Joe Saldano, who's had an off-again, on-again, Finnegan kind of afternoon. He's back out there and trying to stay with the program, but it's all AJ's to talk about right now. Uh, the attrition here today, extremely high dropout rate. Looking for his 60th. Unbelievable. Remember now the man in second, uh, Mario Andretti, or rather uh, Al Unser, with 34 victories. I think earlier we might have said 35, Al Unser. It's 34 victories for Al Unser and 32 for Mario Andretti as they come around. And we're getting an actual clocking on interval now between Boyd running in the first position. And here comes to the line, Rutherford. It's now five seconds as A.J. Foyt continues to pull away. On Gordon Johncock, here's Paul. Gordon Johncock, for having what was considered by many an antiquated engine, you looked like you had a good chance at the lead. What happened to it? Well, we were just having to run so hard, Paul, to, to stay up with the Cosworths, you know, and point that, uh, you know, we come in a couple of times and screwed the boost into it. And we were running such high boost that just tore the engine apart trying to keep up with them. If you were running that high a boost, could you have finished the race? Well, I really don't know because I don't know. I didn't ask him how much fuel I had left, you know, so I don't know if we could have finished or not. What do you think will happen now? You were one of the prime proponents of, uh, of this qualifying effort, the fact that you qualified slow. What is going to happen now? What's the future? Well, I really don't know, Paul. I just hope they do something about it, you know, and make it equal for everybody. We're not asking to have an advantage like the eights had for the last two years, you know. I haven't sat on the pole for two years now. And I can, for instance, this racetrack right here, I can... I can run flat out around this racetrack, and they can run it down in the corner and lift with the Cosworth, and they still can run eight or 10 mile an hour faster than I can, and it's not fair, you know. They're just driving the, the off the out of business and all the little guys, because they don't have a chance to race it. Will we see you with an eight cylinder next year? 
Well, yes, we will. We actually have eight uh, or 12 eight cylinders ordered, uh, six Cosworth and uh, six Offies. So, you know, uh, we have eight cylinders ordered, but they can't everybody get them, you know. If everybody could go to the shelf and buy a V8 so they could be competitive, it would be different. But there's only 12 or 13 teams now that has the, the Cosworth, and, uh, you know, part of them are out of parts. There's two of them that are not here now because they don't have parts. So it's just not fair. Gordon Johncock out of this race. And we're watching Johnny Rutherford make a late stop in the race, Dan. I'd say he'd be able to go all the way. I wonder if AJ can. Krisilov in the pits, his final pit stop. Steve Krisilov in car number 40 running in third position. And he is doing so well this year. A lot of people question Pat Patrick's decision to go with Krisilov. He was 100% right on this kid. He's consistent. He's been driving well. Never gets in over his head. Gets the job done. A.J. Foyt still is in front. There are now 85 laps complete, 15 to go. Will Foyt go to distance, or will the gas run out? I That's the question. Out. I say gas. I should say fuel. Here we are at a turn number one with A.J. Foyt in first. And now, Krisilov taking second. Johnny Rutherford back to second, they say. Steve Krisilov in third in this Texas 200. A.J. Foyt is in a lap by himself. The other cars all pitting. In the second position is Rutherford moving to third. Has been dollar back in fourth is Krisilov. That's the standings in fifth at the present time is number one, Sneva. There are ten laps remaining in the race to Paul Page in the pits. Well, Ken, I just want to show you that despite all of the serious talk at the racetrack today, they still have a good sense of humor. This is Linda Johncock, Gordon Johncock's wife. You will notice a black armband. They are wearing that black armband for the Drake engine that they say is now gone forever. They still can laugh about it. It may look like a black armband to you, but it sure looked like a garter to me, Paul. Here's A.J. Point running high on the track in that second position. At the present time, a lap down. The point in a lap by himself is reported the Johnny Rutherford car. Rutherford reported now in second spot. Do you think with 69, the lap on which A.J. Foyt last came in and fuel that he can go the distance. I don't, Ken, but uh, <laughs> don't underestimate Supertech. NFL preseason action is on CBS Dallas Cowboys versus Denver Broncos. It's next Saturday, 3 p.m. as CBS Sport kicks off its 23rd consecutive season of NFL coverage with a preseason game. The Cowboys taking on the Broncos. It's going to be a dandy. Foyt in turn number one. And the pressure's really on, and the crowd senses it, the public address telling them that it was lap 69. Can he go the distance? Or will this thing begin to sputter and spit and perhaps give Johnny Rutherford his second win of the season? <coughs> Rutherford is in second. Remember, he is a lap down, point in a lap unto himself, and now 92 laps are complete. Early in the race, he stopped on after 23 laps, and in this case, he would have to go 31. That, that would be a big improvement. Remember, uh, we, here is Simon being passed. Remember, we, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, the reason you're not seeing Ungaius, he's blown two engines. One yesterday, one this morning, ran out of engines. So Danny Ungaius, who won here at Texas earlier this year, did not come out to make the grid. Rutherford trying to get back in this race. Sneva there in the car number one, still making up laps, holding on to that number one spot in the standings. Foyt looking for the win. And although he's won the national title more than anyone else in USAC history, it's not the title, it's those races, race after race. The only important race to A.J. Foyt is the next one. Here he is coming back into the main straightaway. There's Johnny Rutherford running in second spot. Going third is Wally Dullenbeck. Dullenbeck's due for a win sometime soon. Laps running down. There are 94 complete. They are working in the 95th lap. A.J working very light on fuel. What happens to a car as that fuel load lightens up? How does it handle, Dan? Well, normally they, they get a little more jittery. They're, they're, they're more comfortable to drive with a full load of fuel. I don't know how they work running on fumes, and I'm pretty sure AJ will be running on fumes pretty soon. Well, here he is coming down. This will be the completion of lap 95. 95 complete for AJ Foyt. Johnny Rutherford right there. Still shown as a lap apart. 
A.J. up there by himself with five laps to go, and the crowd begins to gather around the victory circle here at the Texas World Speedway. Next on our schedule, we're bringing you live coverage from Milwaukee. Coming up in August, 2 to 4, Sunday, August 20th, Eastern Time, CBS Sports Special. Coverage of the United States Auto Club race at Milwaukee on the grand old track on the USAC schedule. The day before, highlights from Talladega and the Travers from Saratoga. That's a great weekend for those of you who like to see him run. A.J. Foyt is the leader. Dan? It looks as though Johnny Rutherford is running A.J. down, probably trying to make him use as much fuel as possible. He certainly can't make up a lap at this stage of the game unless something really different occurs. On this two-mile track, back into the 22-degree banking of turn number three, well in excess of 200 miles an hour. Then the G-forces take over and slow you down a little there. A.J. Foyt, when he comes around, there will be three laps remaining for this man who has done it all. So many times it has been said, so true. He's won reunion, raced at Le Mans, one of the stock cars, and when it comes to championship cars, just a name unto himself. Foyt built it himself, drives it himself, crews it himself. He gives the instructions on the pit stops from right there in the cockpit. High speed office. Looks like that wing adjustment didn't do any harm also. <laughs> He laps Krisilov, Steve Krisilov, the third place car being lapped. Krisilov now two laps down. You see him there on the top of the screen. Here comes Rutherford putting Krisilov a lap down to him. Rutherford running in second place, a lap away. And now there are two laps remaining. Two laps to go. Point in command. This is the shaky time because the only lap that counts is coming up. And so many times, those who seem to have such great control over these races, who can live through it all, do all the right moves, and make all the right adjustments as they make those quick pit stops, in that last lap, they'll hear that strange sound that says it's not their day. One lap to go as Foyt comes around, Rutherford closing, Rutherford moving up, wants to get a lap back. The white flag is out, indicative of a lap remaining. Just in the line, big, brawny, strong Texan. Goes down into turn number one. The Jim Gilmore car. Jim Gilmore gave the command to fire the engines, and he'll be the man in victory lane to greet his own driver as this race comes to conclusion. A nice day for the Gilmores from Michigan. Foyt in the backstretch. Rutherford just behind him by about 100 feet into turn number three. And this Texas crowd will explode. This is their driver, and the Texans are lining them up to come across the line. Rutherford comes up on the outside. They will finish first and second. Rutherford one lap down as they go to the strike. It's Texas, the Lone Star folks, finishing first and second here in this 200-mile Texas event, Dan. A.J. Boyd has won it. Johnny Rutherford comes in in second place. Finishing in third will be Steve Krisiloff, and fourth will be Wally Dullenbach, with the fifth position going to Tom Sneva as the checkered flag is unfurled on another spectacular United States Auto Club event. This one's had a little bit of everything, and in two weeks we're going to see them go at it again on the grand old track, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, here on CBS. After averaging 159 miles an hour, A.J. Foyt has won the 60th race of his career. He's in victory lane. Let's go to Paul Page. A.J. Foyt has pulled in his number 14, Gilmore Coyote, into victory lane here. A.J. Foyt, it's been a long time, and you've done it in front of a Texas crowd. Does that make it extra special? It really does. If you got to win, I want to win in front of my hometown people. But all in all, I uh, won this race for my mother's in the hospital and Di Gilmore. A.J. Foyt. A.J. Foyt climbing out of the car. His mother in the hospital. A lot of pressure here today. Uh, we'll let A.J. have just a moment because it, as you saw, it seemed to choke him up just a minute. We'll step back now. A.J. AJ Foyt, let me ask you. You came in early, in the early part of the race. It appeared to be an unscheduled pit stop. It's something that you wanted. Why did you do that? Was that the strategy? Well, not really, no. Uh, the car was handling beautiful, and we got loose, and uh, I was just about ready to spin, and I've crashed here a couple times, and that's not the most fortunate thing that you can do. So my crew worked fantastic this year. We're finally getting our act together, and we made uh, and put a smaller right rear tire change on, and uh, which helped the chassis a lot. And uh, 
you know, we just didn't have a lot of time to start it. We've had our problems all year, but like I say, you know, my mother went to the hospital this week. Uh, Di Gilmore, our sponsor, and Jim's here with me, is going to have to be operated on Tuesday. So uh, all in all, much as both of them love racing, neither one was here. So this win uh, meant a lot to me for them. Well, AJ, I'm sure they're seeing you here today on CBS, and they know that you have done well and that you are a happy man. I'm sure they're happy for you. Earlier in the year, you were quoted as saying that you were not spending as much attention to racing as you should. Was that a true statement? It really was. Uh, I haven't. Uh, my crew is already starting construction and planning on what we're going to build next year because this car has been... Since 1973, it's been a very competitive car. It's a very good car. I think it's a safe car. It's a fast car. But, you know, everybody's kind of caught up with us, and uh, I think some of them's passed us. But uh, you can see how my crew come back and worked hard today. They're not quitters. We've been on bottom before, and uh, we're not planning on staying there because uh, you'll see me run for a couple more years, and, and that's about it. A.J. Foyt, you are a winner here under a little bit of controversy. Well, a large controversy for you, Sack. Do you have a reaction to it? I don't know what you're really talking about, to be honest with you. A.J. Foyt wins an eight-cylinder car, and he is the winner here in the Texas 200 at College Station. A.J. Foyt, Ken? Right, go, since, 19, since 1960, he's been a name to reckon with, and he will be for some years to come, as you just heard him say. The marvelous Mr. Foyt. Some people call him rough and gruff, but when he wants to be, he can be the most sensitive and quiet and introspective person you could hope to meet. A great day for Foyt. And Johnny Rutherford has finished in second. Johnny started to drive in today as if he was coming to pit road. And uh, then he made the, he, he drove right up to pit road and then faked it and turned left. And he's down there now with Paul Page. Here's Johnny Rutherford, Johnny Rutherford's second place car. And when you drove past the victory circle, you kind of darted up here like you belonged. Well, I, I still feel like maybe there's an outside chance we're going to check the scoring, you know, just to see for sure that we were second because we, we don't know. A.J. made a long green stop, and uh, uh, we're going to want to find out naturally. But he drove a heck of a race, and uh, you know, he deserves to be up here if we can't be. <laughs> About midway through the race, there was a conversation going on on the radios between you and Tyler Alexander and Betty scoring on a stand for you about your position in the race. Now, that's what you're not sure about. Specifically, where is the question? Well, we think that uh, maybe A.J. made a long green stop and one yellow stop, and uh, we uh, made all of ours on the yellow, you know. Anyway, he, uh, he listened to A.J. He drove a heck of a race, and uh, like I say, if we can't be here, he deserves to be. Of course, it doesn't hurt at all for two Texans to be one-two at a Texas race, does no, it? No, it really doesn't. Johnny Rutherford, second-place car, yet there is some question in his mind, and they'll have to resolve that. Well, as the matter stands, Foyt would win the 60th race of his career. It spans the time since 1960 to the present. His last win was at Mossport in 1977. Finishing in second place today, as we look at the USAC schedule, is Johnny Rutherford. Coming up is Milwaukee, and CBS will bring it to you complete. Following that is the California 500 in Ontario, California, and that event could give Al Unser the first triple crown in the history of the game. He's already won Pocono, and he's already won Indy. Then comes Trenton, and then it's on to England, where they'll be making two appearances for the first time over in the mother country, and then Phoenix, Arizona will wrap up the season, and you'll be seeing one of those English races as well as the Phoenix finale on CBS. A final look at the standings in today's United States Auto Club Championship event from the Texas World Speedway after this. At College Station, Texas, the tempers are still erupting out here. Here's Steve Krisloff, who was walking up toward the pit area. Now he's talking with Johnny Rutherford, and there was some kind of a brouhaha that started down there. Did you understand it, Dan? No, I didn't, but one of AJ's big old Texas crewmen just carried him out bodily, and I think that ended it. Let's go to Paul Page. Well, Steve Krisloff had come up here. He is the third place car, the first four-cylinder car. He stepped over to the car and said something to Foyt, apparently about the race on the track. Foyt reacted very violently. Apparently, it was a criticism by Krisloff, though we did not hear it, and the crew would not tell us exactly what was said. Foyt then reached out, grabbed for Krisloff. There was a bit of a struggle, but the crew stepped in instantly. And then John Fisher, who is a giant man on the Foyt crew, literally picked Krisloff up, carried him out of the victory circle. They said, this is not the place, and it was over. Well, that's the story of what happened here at the end of the race. It has been some day. All kinds of controversy, and there is Krisloff being carried away. 
I've heard about folks getting carried away at an auto race, but that's the first time I ever saw him carried away like that, Dan. Big John is like a great big grizzly bear. That's <laughs> <laughs> a bear hug. Well, Kristoloff was unhappy, but Foyt was having no part of it, nor was his crew. Let's take a look at the final standings in this race, which has been something else here today at College Station, Texas. A.J. Foyt wins the 60th United States Auto Club race of his career, first one since Mossport a year ago. Finishing in second was Rutherford. Finishing in third was the gentleman you just saw over the shoulder of one of the Foyt pit crew, Steve Chrysalhoff. Finishing in fourth was Wally Dollenbach, while in fifth was Tom Sneva. Sixth was Dick Simon. Finishing seventh was Gordon Johncock. Eighth credit to Bobby Unser. Then ninth came Rick Mears. And tenth came to Joe Saldano, who sputtered around lap after lap, but finally was able to stay up long enough to finish in the tenth position. Foyt was victorious. His average speed nowhere near the record of one hour and five minutes that goes to Bettenhausen years ago at an average of 159 miles per hour today the race was won by Foyt in the time of one hour 15 minutes 26 and 95 one hundredths of a second the standings again Foyt first Rutherford second and Chrysalov finishing in third in the closeout of this 200 mile race from College Station Texas Car being taken back to the garage area here at College Station, Texas. Never a dull moment, that's for sure today. And here's another report on that incident at the end of the event from Paul Page. Well, of course, Ken, A.J. Foyt made it back to the garage area, but not without controversy. What happened, apparently, was Steve Chrysaloff, the third-place finisher, stepped up to the side of Foyt's car and accused him of cheating under the yellow light. Foyt immediately reached out to grab Chrysaloff, and there was a fight for a second, though no blows appeared to be landed. The crew stepped in and separated them, and he was finally carried out. But apparently the whole cause of it was Chrysaloff accused Foyt of cheating under the yellow light. Thank you, Paul. Well, let's take a look at the finish in slow-mo. We've had a day with the, the V8s against the four-cylinders and controversy and qualifying, and then here's the finish again as they come out of turn number four. Here is uh, where... Johnny Rutherford. Johnny Rutherford thinks he's won the race. Everyone unofficially had him a lap down. He thinks he put the nose of his car in front of A.J. Foyt. He did cross the finish line first, I believe. Now watch. He does, but then he would be a lap down. He'd just be making right. up the lap. He'd Very be out close. in front by about a foot at the finish. That's right. another controversy today, and it's gone on and on. The whole race has been embroiled in all kinds of conversation as well as in racing, and the temperatures today have been up in the hundreds. So has the controversy. Meanwhile, over at Talladega, Alabama, it's been a scorcher today, too. And on the phone with us is Brock Yates, who's been there. What happened in the Talladega 500 today, Brock? Ken, it was an incredible afternoon. Uh, our old friend Lenny Pond has been seeking his first Grand National victory for I don't know how many years. Finally did it after five second places. And the incredible part about it was he averaged 174.7 miles an hour. You're kidding. Which is the world's <laughs> close course record for 500 miles at least. He beat Donnie Allison to the line in another Oldsmobile by about a car length. Cale Yarborough, who uh, dominated most of the race in another Oldsmobile, was third, and Benny Parsons was fourth. There were 67 lead changes, if you can imagine it, Ken, and our old friend Buddy Baker did one lap at, get this, 201 miles an hour around here. And for those old taxi cabs that they run in Grand National Racing, that's really standing on the gas. Well, we're going to be get to getting to see that on August 19th. The Talladega 500 is part of a big double feature on the CBS Sports Spectacular. That's Saturday, August 19th with the Traverse. And Lenny Pond won it. I bet he was excited, Brock.